This is a tutorial on how to install your iPod. Now, the reason why you should read this tutorial before you just plug in your iPod is because first you will understand how the iPod works and how to make it do what you want it to do. And second, you will install it right so in the future you won't have any glitches. Now first, you're going to have to install iTunes. Now, in order to do that, go down to Start, and then go up to where you see Internet. Now, in the address bar, type in www.download.com. Once it loads at the top, you should see a search bar. Put your cursor inside and click, and then type in iTunes. Then click Go. Now, in the search results, scroll down until you can find iTunes. Now the current version right now is iTunes 7.0.2 but in the future it'll be a higher number which is fine because usually this will be the same no matter what version you have. Now click on the download and it takes you to Apple's website. Just uncheck those two boxes and then go right past the um, email. You won't have to put in an email for in order this to work. So then just click download iTunes for free. And then you get this dialog and just hit the save button which is in the center. And then click desktop which is all the way to the left. And then hit save. It may take a while to download on a dial up connection. Okay, now it's almost done. Just a couple more seconds to go. I just fast forwarded to this point so you wouldn't have to wait. Now you hit the run in the bottom left. I'll zoom in here so you can see it. And then you, if this comes up, just hit run again. Then you just wait a little little bit until something pops up and then I'll show you what to do next. Okay, it's preparing to install. All right, here we go. First, just click Next, and then you're going to have to agree to the statement, and then hit Next. And now there are some options here. The first one asks if you want to put shortcuts on your desktop. I'm going to leave that checked. The next two, I'm going to uncheck. It's up to you. Then click Install. Alright, we're going to get out of this Internet Explorer because we don't need it anymore and our installation is actually happening in the background. So let me go up here and click the X. Alright, and here you can see it installing. Now it does take a little while to install so I'm just going to fast forward again. Okay, now it's almost done. Alright, now it's asking us if we want to start iTunes now or if we just want to close the installation. I'm going to open it now and hit finish. Alright, and now there's another statement that we need to agree on, so just hit agree. Then it asks you some questions, and I'm going to help step you through them. First, hit Next. 
Now here it's asking you if you want to add your previous library. If you ever put CDs in your computer, it's asking you if you want to put it in iTunes. If you do this, it'll also go to your iPod. We're just going to say yes, import them. I'm going to hit no, I'll change them myself. And then I'm going to hit next. And we're going to say take me to the iTunes library rather than the music store because I want to show you something there before we go to this music store in a different tutorial. Alright, there it is. And at the top you can see it converting the couple songs that I had already in my computer. Now if you don't have any songs you won't actually see any of this happening or if you didn't check that you wanted to import your songs. Alright, that's all finished. So now I'm going to show you what happens when you plug in your iPod and then also how to set those settings the way that you would want them to be set. When you plug in your iPod, the first thing it will ask you is what you want to name it. This is really helpful if you have multiple iPods for different members of your family or if you simply have more than one. Now, there's two boxes. The first is for music and the second for photos. Um, as for the reason why you would not want to automatically sync your songs is if you might have a thousand CDs but your iPod can only hold 500. Then you want to manually move it over but my library isn't as big as my iPod so I'm gonna leave it checked you can always change it in the future I suggest leaving it checked if you're not sure what you wanna do okay so now it's done moving the songs over once it does that it'll say it's okay to disconnect don't disconnect it before it says it's okay now over here in the devices under the iPod Nano if you click on music you'll see all the different music titles in your iPod. If you click on the music on your library, you'll see all the music on your computer. They should both be the same if you chose the automatic synchronization. That's the end of this tutorial. If you need more help, go to my business at www.thegizmoshack.com and go to the contact page. We can also help you with your other electronic devices and even help you solve problems on your computer. Check us out www.thegizmoshack.com